Good morning, everybody. This online workshop on computational simulation of photonic structures is brought to you by Studio 87. My name is Manaza Adakhan, and I'm a founder of Studio 87 and also an assistant professor at the Department of Biomedical Engineering, Balochistan University of Engineering and Technology, Pakistan. For those of you who are newbie, Photonics is the science of generating, controlling, and detecting photons, especially in the visible and near infrared re region. The term photonics was coined between 1960 and 70s following emerging use of light emitters and optical fibers. And in a specific nanophotonics is an intersection of uh, optical, electrical engineering, and nanotechnology. So here we explore the behavior of light at an interface of nanoscopic level. It's just a quick overview of uh, the content we will be covering in this workshop. So in today's session, we will uh, talk about photonic crystal and more importantly, the ones in nature, which is basically a survival mechanism in many living organisms. So we begin with understanding what exactly photonic crystals are and what kind of chemistry they have with light. Periodic, dielectric, uh, micro or uh, nanomaterials when arranged spatially at sub-wavelength spacing, either in one, two or three dimensions, they exhibit exquisite light different properties. And this is precisely how we define photonic crystals. They efficiently reflect light of a specific wavelength and this phenomenon sounds familiar. Oh yeah. It's synonymous to diffraction of X-rays by crystal system. There are millions of examples in nature, but I've quoted only a few here, and a species that exist in nature is basically a means of survival by mimicry to the surroundings in many living organisms. And a classical example is of a chameleon. We often use it to offend or mock people who change colors according to their needs. Also, you can see over here, butterfly and opal as examples of photonic crystal from nature. In the first few slides, you'll get a deeper understanding of the rationale behind. By the way, opal is a translucent mineral consisting of hydrated silica for your color. Some types of it are used as gemstones as well. The optical process and biological systems or optical engineering studies that exploit light for cell imaging and sensing applications come under the category of biophotonics. This also includes the use of fluorescent markers into biological system for tracking cell dynamics and drug delivery processes. In this slide, you can see firefly, and in my native language, it's called jugnu. Poets and singers use it metaphorically a lot in their piece of art anyways. So I've included a video of it, and uh, Firefly has a, a flash communication system, which is basically a courtship behavior of Firefly. No wonder why in many Asian countries, poets use it as a symbolism of love and passion. I'm not sure what a Europeans, Americans, and Brit thinks of it, but one thing is for sure, it's magnificently artistic work of nature. You see? So let's take a mechanistic insight of the light reduction process in fireflies. Uh, the phenomena itself is called bioluminescence. And uh, we are going to take a look at it from scientist's eye view, not a poet's eye view. So it's, it's the catalysis of luciferin by an enzyme called luciferase in the process of cofactors like magnesium, oxygen, and uh, this, uh, this whole reaction takes place inside cells called photocytes. And uh, these are the cells that produce light, so as the name uh, represent. So once oxygen is added, the system forms a cyclic uh, peroxide which releases light as it decomposes. This photochemical reaction is driven by oxygen. So the light, strong and versatile exoskeleton that covers all lines, all surfaces are butting on or interfacing with the environment enables its respiratory system uh, to transfer oxygen to uh, uh, photocytes. So as the oxygen gushes into uh, you know photocyte through this uh, tracheal passage, the lantern turns on and it has a, 
um, there and final nerve uh, synapses uh, close to tracheal passage rather than uh, somewhere in the proximity of a photocyte. And Trimarin is a study titled Nitric Oxide and the Control of Fire Flashing. Firefly flashing says that the duration of a single flash is typically a few hundred milliseconds. And uh, flash patterns vary among uh, firefly species. This is very interesting. External stimuli triggers the release of hormone called octopamine, which in turn activates luciferin catalysis. So technically, it's the elevated hormone that sets in flash communication system upon seeing firefly, upon seeing female firefly. It also suggests every time there is this female firefly nearby, it raises octopamine and uh, the rest of the explanation you see is very poetic. Now we discuss another example from nature. The uh, peculiar vivid colors of uh, nature you see in flowers and butterflies fluttering around them. Have you ever wondered um, the science behind uh, nature's kaleidoscope? No? So there are two uh, main mechanisms. Either it comes from dyes or intricate geometries at nanoscale which reflect light of a specific wavelength. So the beautiful color, the beautiful bright yellow color of uh, sunflower comes from a pigment called beta carotin. And some other pigments that give color to flowers are chlorophyll and cyanins, carotenoids, beta lanes. However, in case of beetles, insects, and reptiles, uh, the bright, beautiful color uh, comes from different periodic structural features, uh, which we normally refer as photonic crystal. The gleaming metallic color in butterflies you see while the flutter overhead are technically structural colors. And nature has aligned intricate uh, micro nanostructure in the scales of butterflies with such a delicacy that uh, cause a selective diffraction and especially in homogeneities give them the peculiar hue um, and it's it's distinct in each species. So these scales are uh, 150 and 200 micrometers in length and the width ranges from 30 to 75 micrometers. So now we do uh, a little dissection of a butterfly and try to unravel a mystery behind. So take a look at the figure on your left. So these are the scales. Uh, the which are, these scales are made of parallel ridges and transverse ribs. It's an electron micrograph and check it out. The pepper pot is structured in the proximity of the ribs. You see, isn't it amazing? The scale bar is one micrometer. So what do you think it does to the light that impinges on it? Hmm? Yeah, selective reflection. Figure below is a cross-sectional view. This is a cross-sectional view of uh, figure A and uh, on to the right side, we will notice uh, the cross-sectional view of the ventral wing. So here you will notice a change. Do you see this grain, right? between cuticular uh, membrane of a scale and uh, ribs and ridges network. So it's diameter reported by author of this study is in nanometers range. And it has a regular face centered cubic uh, structure, inverted opal structure. So about this inverted opal structure, you will understand uh, in the subsequent uh, lectures. So it's the, it's a type of a photonic crystal with you know holes in it that are arranged in FCC fashion, face centered cubic fashion. So these green act as uh, photonic crystals, and it constitute the bright colors of butterflies depending on observation or and incident angles of light. Now here comes the chameleon who changed color with its surrounding. Look at this lazy guy and how he gazes around. Oh my.
He's so lazy. It also unbelievable, right? So panther chameleons have the remarkable ability to exhibit complex and rapid color change uh, during social interactions, such as male contest or court trip. Amazing, right? Both sexes and at all ages can vary the brightness of their skin tone through dispersion of uh, pigments. Uh, but according to a research study, adult males are um, additionally characterized both by exceptionally large intra-specific color variation, which you will witness in this video. And in the presence of a male competitor or potentially receptive female, a mature male panther chameleon shifts is a skin color, as you can see over here, green, yellow, orange, and the blue patches uh, becomes... Uh, whitish it takes place within a couple of minutes and it's a fully reversible process you see how we, the entire skin color is changed to blue and this is the white patches i was referring to i'm thinking mm, white chameleons are outcast for poets are they biased towards butterflies or fireflies or does it look ugly to them? So amazing, right? It's beautiful. So the color shifting phenomena goes through active tuning of uh, lattice of guanine nanocrystal, uh, which are present in the superficial thick layer of iridophores. So the, these are the two different, this is the upper layer and this is the deeper layer. And uh, iridophore is a type of uh, cell that contains stacked crystalline chemochromes, which diffract light and cause iridescence. So chameleons have evolved to uh, superimpose populations of uh, iridophores with different morphologies and functions. So this is the upper layer and it's multi-layer, which is responsible for rapid structural color change uh, through active tuning of uh, guanine nanocrystals. So I'll show you yeah, an electron micrograph of it. And the deeper layer has a uh, uh Basically uh, they reflect uh, light in infrared regions. So there are two different types of iridophores. Uh, the ones that uh, reflect visible light and the ones that uh, diffract uh, infrared, right? And uh, this is kind of a, a evolutionary novelty in them because uh, at the very same time, it provides them efficient camouflage and thermal protection. The guanine crystals are of different size shapes and organization. So these are the guanine nanocrystals I was referring to. The upper layer is, uh, and uh, this is the epidermis. The, these are the two different layers, uh, S-arid and D-arid. D-arid is basically the type of iridophore or the cells that uh, diffract infrared light. And S-aridophore is the one that diffract visible light and uh, gives this uh, color change uh, when uh, a male chameleon is in relaxed or uh, excited a state. So this upper layer is a uh, fully uh, developed only in the skin of adult males and uh, reduced in the skin of female juveniles. The arrangement of high and low refractive index materials, that is the cytoplasm and the guanine crystal, they both have different refractive indices. So the guanine has 1.83 and cytoplasm has 1.33. So this makes them behave as a photonic crystal. And um, the color change and iridophore four types in pantocleon chameleon, uh, the, the mechanism behind it is shown in figure C, D, and E. So 
uh, what happens uh, when a male is a uh, male uh, panther chameleon is an uh, excited state, the inter uh, crystal distance changes and the morphology changes. So you can see it changes from a square to a hexagonal uh, distribution arrangement of a guanine crystal, which is a risk, which actually uh, gives a change in the diffracting wavelength and thus cause the color change as we witnessed in the video. So this figure is basically a chromaticity chart of a, a chameleon and uh, the black dot shows the time evolution and the uh, white uh, dash line shows uh, a simulated uh, nano guanine crystal. Um, optical response and it's obtained through numerical simulation of a FCC uh, crystal system of Ghani. So basically this is uh, the, the, the mechanism behind, this is the mechanism behind uh, the color change in chameleon, the variation and the interparticle uh, distance. So slight alterations of geometry in photonic crystal can generate dem dramatic changes in color. And also states that panther chameleons shift from one vibrant color to another by modifying guanine crystal spacing in uh, their S to the four layer. So this there, this provide this gives them the camouflage properties, and this layer it gives them thermal protection. So and this is the last example, and this is not a cockroach; it's a black fire beetle. And believe me, this guy is no saint. Um, it's our sensor can sense infrared in the range of 2.2 to 3.5 microns, roughly from a distance of eight miles. But this radio location thing he uses to communicate with his female counterparts. Black fire beetle is from uh, Melanophila genus and they're known as pyrophilus or fire loving insects. And uh, you'll find thousands of them in barn forest. Ivan Amato writes in our article published in Photonic Focus that the freshly born area serves as a meeting place for both sexes. So you can say it's where the day to do the family planning thing. Schmidt says uh, young larvae feed on the barn box. That's why they migrate there. So coming to the part how they know a fire is breaking out miles away and it's time to go on a date. Mm. These guys have infrared radiation sensing pit organs, right? And each pit contains a dome-shaped sensor, and each of uh, the sensorium, uh, each sensorium has a wax gland, and it's filled with a fluid, and it serves as a mechanical receptor. So as the infrared radi radiation impinges on it, it sets up a neural activity to generate IR image of the brain of this black handsome guy who looks more like a black cockroach. <laughs> I'm not body shaming, just saying that based on its experience, it does look like a black cockroach. So this is the IR uh, image that gener which, is, which, gen which is generated uh, by a neural impulse. And that he follows the forest where the fire has broken. So it's the end of the today's session. In the upcoming lectures, we'll focus on biomimetics or the possibility of fabricating these structures in the laboratories. Thank you very much for your time and attention. To stay updated, please subscribe to Studio 87 channel. Goodbye.